practically catching it up. All that Amazon and all that ordering stuff is something else. Um, and so I haven't been here for a little bit. But it's just because I stay here over my uh, mother, my stepdad's, to where I don't have to drive all the way from Wood City. So I'm away from my wife all week. So when Friday comes, I'm ready to be home. So that's why I'm not here. <laughs> and it's, it's not because I don't want to be here. It's like I miss my wife. She misses me. I want to be home. So anyway, it's good to be back. And um, I didn't expect this many people to be here today, but hey, that's great. So let's go into prayer if y'all don't mind. Father, I just thank you for another wonderful night. And uh, I just ask you, Lord, to just to bless this time together. Bless the words that come out of my mouth, Lord. Let it be your word, for your praise, and for your glory. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. All right. Well, you know, I was talking to a guy at work, and uh, he's a big-time YouTube guy. Him and his wife is trying their best to get off the grid, so to speak. And uh, Tommy knows what I'm talking about. I'm not going to say his name, but uh, he watches YouTube, and he's been like the guy who's telling us everything about what's going on in the world, you know. You know, this guy's claiming himself as God, and this and that, and, you know, all these wars and all these things that's going on. I mean, he tells me things I didn't even know that was in, even in the news, crazy stuff, and I was just like, you know, I told him one day, I really felt strong uh, when that word came my way. And I told him, I said, Mike, everything that you're searching for, man, is in Christ Jesus. And he kind of like looked at me a little bit, kind of like, you know, all right. But it was simple. But I felt that from the Spirit of the Lord just to really tell him that, saying, everything you're searching for is in Christ Jesus. And it's the same thing for here in recovery, you know. All of us is struggling with some type of problem, addiction, in some form or fashion. You know, for a long time, I struggled with, like, anger issues, getting over uh, situations with, like, pornographic stuff. That was, ever since I was a kid, I was brought into that type of world. And so when you become a Christian, it don't instantly sometimes just go. It takes a progress, you know, of constantly just searching and just knowing more about who God is and who you are in Christ Jesus and what he did for you. So that it comes in time, but it's time spent in that word. And so I came across this in 2 Peter. 2 Peter. And, um, Chapter 1, where it say, and I'm just going to start from the beginning. And it says, Simon, and I'm reading from the NIV, so it's going to be a little bit different from uh, most people what they've got. Usually I have the New King James Version, but this is what I grabbed when I was handing on to the truck. So. Simon Peter, a servant and apostle of Jesus Christ, to those who through the righteousness of our God and Savior Jesus Christ have received a faith as precious as ours. Grace and peace be yours in abundance through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. Now this is basically what I want to kind of touch on. It's on verse 3 where it says, His divine power has given us everything we need for life and godliness through our knowledge of Him who has called us by His own glory in goodness through okay now I'm gonna keep on reading through this he has given us his very great and precious promises so that through them you may participate in the divine nature and escape the corrupt in the world caused by evil desires for this very reason make every effort to add to your faith goodness and to goodness knowledge into knowledge, self-control, into self-control, perseverance, into perseverance, godliness, 
and to godliness brotherly kindness and to brotherly kindness love for if you possess these qualities in increasing measure they will keep you from being ineffective and unproductive in your knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ but if anyone does not have them he is and, and listen to this but if anyone does not have them he is nearsighted and blind and has forgotten that he has been cleansed from his past sins now I kind of wanted to read the whole that part right there in the stop at chapter 10 and um one of the things that I've been sharing with the guy at work has been things just like this, what I'm sharing tonight. And so these are kind of like fruits of uh, knowing God, spending time with him, knowing more about who you are as a Christian. Now, if you're not a Christian, please listen to what I'm saying because this is something that I hope that the Holy Spirit be able to grab and touch you in the heart and let you know that this is the answer for what you're looking for. If you want to be set free, this is the answer. Because Jesus Christ is recovered, period. He is the only one that will totally set you free, regardless of what you're going through in your life. Okay? I want to add right here where it says, but if anyone, chapter, I mean, verse 9, but if anyone does not have them, he is nearsighted and blind and has forgotten that he has been cleansed from his past sins. Now, to me, this is talking to like Christians because a lot of times we forget that we have been forgiven and washed in the blood. Our sins, past, present, and future, has been forgiven. It's under the blood. We sometimes forget that. So when you fall and make a mistake, most of the time we back off. We don't want us to get closer to God. We feel dirty. We feel unworthy. Okay? And we kind of back off. And that's where I started talking about right here when I started off in verse 3. He has given us this divine power and has given us everything that we need. It's already been done and taken care of at the cross over 2,000 years ago. It's ours to have. But a lot of people don't know how to receive from the Lord. And they don't understand that it's in the knowledge of Him that we possess these things. And so our knowledge of who we are in Christ Jesus is so key. I mean, it really, truly is. Christians live a lot of defeated lives in this world for the simple fact is that they don't know what they possess. They don't know that they have the right to access the kingdom of God and say, Lord, I take because Jesus paid the price for it. And that's where we struggle in life. We have hard times with it because we go like, it's kind of like a roller coaster kind of way. You know, you get in there and you start saying, man, I'm doing good. I'm doing great. Everything's just looking, you know, and the thing you don't understand is self-righteousness that you're stepping into. The more that you start depending on, hey, I feel good. Everything's going great. But then as soon as something goes bad, well, you know, you feel like you just lost your connection with Christ right off the bat. And you haven't. It's a lie from the pits of hell. Your connection with Christ if you're a child of God is forever but it's your choice okay to continue to have that walk with him because he's not going to force even though you're his child he's not going to force you to know more about him okay he's not going to sit there and say no look here you know, come over here he's not going to do that he didn't do it when you was out there doing whatever you want to do before you ever came to him and he's not going to do it even when you become a Christian. You have to make a conscious decision that you want to get a little bit closer to God, get to know a little bit more about him. And that's how coming to know him is reading the word. Now me, when I first started off with this, uh, about reading the word and all that, I was one of them type of people that actually did that. I mean, I used to stay up till like 2, 3 o'clock. And I'm not saying it's a brag, I'm just saying 
I just had that much of a desire. Two, three o'clock in the morning, just reading. Even though I didn't understand anything, I just read it. Because the Bible just said, come by faith. He didn't say come by knowledge and wisdom. He said by faith. Just believe and come. The rest of knowing and wisdom and knowledge and all that other stuff, it'll come in time. The more that you get to get closer to the Lord. So, you know, don't get yourself all into a pressure to where you say, I got to have this certain type of knowledge. I got to know this. No. It's a childlike faith. That's why he said, don't stop the children coming unto me. He said, because such is the kingdom of God. Okay? Childlike faith is what he was talking about. Okay? And so the more that I read, the more I started to know more about God. But I'll tell you one of the things that really got me into knowing more about God was there were certain pastors, teachers that I started listening to. You know, back then it was like cassette tapes and stuff like that. And then, you know, found the DVDs and stuff. And I started learning and listening because the Holy Spirit has a way of leading you to somebody that you have like a, hmm, you know, there's something about this guy, I kind of like what he's saying. And it's kind of like when I came a couple of times uh, to New Beginning, the church, I like how the way uh, Pastor Paul usually kind of, you know, say certain things and how the way the Spirit kind of talks to him about this and that. And it kind of draws you and it's like you want to listen. So that's another way how the way God starts teaching you is by ways like that. It's not just getting off in here and i got to read 10 chapters a day. It's not like that. It's a slow process, but God has his ways of doing it. But you have to have that desire that you want to get closer. Okay? You want to get closer to him. You want a change in your life. Now you can come. You can do all these things that you want to do in life and do the right steps, say the right things, okay? But it ain't true change until you really have an encounter with Christ Jesus himself. Because he's really, he's really the change of everything that you need, everything that you need. So when it talks about here, he says, his divine power has given us everything we need for life and godliness through our knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and goodness the knowledge of Jesus Christ himself so he says everything so everything means everything it don't matter what kind of situation you're in okay the guy that I know up there at work well he's one of the guys there's another person man that he had a chance to share with me. He was talking about that he struggles with certain type of drugs and that, you know, there's another person that actually, I don't know why, it's like the Spirit of the Lord draws certain people coming to me and they just start talking to me and they just share things, man, like, they're like, I don't know why I'm telling you this, but I'm just, you know. And I listen. And it's like, you know, God, what are you trying to do here? <laughs> you know? But it's the Lord working through me to talk to these people and to share with them. And the thing is, is that I just want to let them know, hey, Jesus is the answer to what you need. But then I wouldn't know any of that if I didn't practice what the scriptures are saying here. You have to get to the point to where, man, you have to get off of the, and I hate, you know, don't take this as being offensive, but off the lazy boat. Some Christians get into that mode of being lazy but, you know, it's like, <laughs> I'm going to tell you something funny. To kind of wrap what I'm trying to say. I was watching this TV show. And they went to, uh, it was a comedian show. But anyway, they went to this bomb fest. And, the, you know, this bomb fest, it was like all these people that smoke weed and all this stuff like that. And, you know, they have some kind of festival and they listen to hard rock and everything. And, um. Uh, they went up there and they wanted to interview interview these people why they were hot, okay? And so they came up and they started asking them questions. And one person they asked, they said, do you know who the President of the United States is? Uh, uh, I don't. And I mean, I was shocked. It was here in the United States. And then this guy was just asking him all kinds of questions. But what was the trip about it is then when he told them about 
Well, can you name like um, 10 different types of weeds? Oh, yeah, man. It, this, this, this. He named it all, man. He was on top of it. You know, how, how did that person know all this stuff? Praxis, learning, getting into that type of lifestyle and not getting off the gas, so to speak. You know? Well, it's the same type of, you know, thing that I'm saying that you have to apply as a Christian also. You know, for us to know things about the Lord is to get closer to Him, to read His Word, to spend time, to be able to go to church and things like that, and even have, like, recovery, to know more about who He is. And then the more you know who He is, it's the more you know who you are in Him. That's the thing that's so awesome, you know? And I came up and I started talking to these people and they're sharing all these things to me. And, you know, and I talked to him about the goodness of God and how the way they do this and do that, and, you know? And one guy asked me, he sat there and said, you know, I tried it before, it just didn't work for me. And I said, okay. I said, well, you know, it worked for me because it delivered me from a lot of things. And he's like, oh, you know, I tried it, but, you know, it, it just ain't for me. And I said, well, I mean, you know, I'm not saying it's, you know, that's not float your boat, but that's fine. And I sit there and I said, well, you know, before I get finished talking to you, why? Why didn't it work for you? And I mean, right off the bat, I knew what the problem was when he sat there and opened his mouth and he said, well, my stepdad was a old time Pentecostal pastor. And he did nothing but preach the fire and brimstone type of message and so on and so on. And I said, okay. But he didn't live the life. He had women over to the house. He cheated on my mom. He did this. He did that. And he said, that turned me off. I didn't have nothing to do with Jesus after that. And I can care less about it. And I said, you know... You can use it as an excuse if you want to. Well, what do you mean? I said, just wait a minute. You can use it as an excuse if you want to. I said, but you have to have your own walk with him. You have to have your own experience with him. And he said, well, you know, I don't think I want any of that, man, because, you know, I've seen how the way y'all so-called Christians are. Y'all, one minute y'all put your little happy face on and everything's just... Hey, hallelujah, bless you, brother. But then I see you down the road and you're cussing up all type of a storm around your head. You know? And I'm like, hey, granted, I understand what you're talking about, man. I understand that sometimes we fail. I said, but you know, we're human. We make mistakes. As long as we live in this body, we're going to make mistakes. I said, but look, Jesus Christ is the perfect man. If you fix your eyes on him, You'll get out of what you need to get out of, dude. And what you're searching for isn't him. Well, you know, it just ain't for me, man. And so I sit there and I said, well, if that's how you feel, that's okay. And he just said, well, you know, I don't, I don't even know why you even do this. You know, most of the people probably don't even listen to what you're saying, Jimmy. They'll talk behind your back. They'll do this and they'll do that. And I sit there and I said, okay. So I turned over here. And, um. Uh, patient with me just for a second and I said I'll tell you why I do it and it's Romans 116 and I told him I said I am not ashamed of the gospel because it is the power of God for the salvation of everyone who believes first for the Jews then for the Gentiles for in the gospel a righteousness from God is revealed. A righteousness that is by faith from first to last. Just as it is written, the righteous shall live by faith. And I shared that scripture with him that I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And he just kind of like, man, you for real. And I said, yes, I am. And he said, well, you know, if that floats your boat, that floats your boat. I said, hey, you take it for whatever you want to take it for. 
And so, you know, that guy turns away and he goes about his life. But, you know, what was the thing that really bothered me was just I didn't like it any like that. And I remember, man, that I just started praying. And all of a sudden, I just had this burden for this person and just started praying for this person. And it ain't the first time that God did that for me. Now, I've never seen these two people I'm talking about, you know, the second person I'm fixing to tell you. But I sit there and I pray for that person and pray for that person until I felt a release in my heart that God said, okay, son, you did it, that's it. And I remember one time I walked by a person never met in my whole entire life. He, he was in a, a wheelchair. And I'm not saying God does this to everybody, but I sit there and I looked at this man and then all of a sudden the Holy Spirit just touched me and he said, fast for this man three days. And I was like, no. I, I didn't want to fast. I don't care to fast. I mean, look, you can tell. I don't fast very much. And I said, what? This must not be the spirit, the devil. But it was the Lord. That he, it touches me in such a way that I just know it was him. And I fasted for this person three days. Didn't eat nothing, didn't drink nothing for three days. Never saw that guy. I'm 48 years old, and that was back like when I was 21. Never seen that man again. But the Spirit of the Lord knows what he's doing. And God has his divine power, his way of doing things, to where if you put your life in his hands, you'll see that divine power. You'll see that goodness. He'll lead you in ways that you never thought existed. And your life will become like, to me, it was exciting to see how the way God was working in me. And it's because of what I was reading in, in, in Peter, or, I mean, Second Peter, it's the more of the knowledge that you start learning of who you are in Christ Jesus. You start walking in that grace. And you start realizing that, hey, it's not all about me, it's about him. And I start realizing, man, when I share my life with somebody, I'm sharing Christ to them because Christ is working through me to them. And I'm starting to see that, that it's, it's really me just actually stepping out the way and God's doing the work. And then before you know it, when, you, when God, you allow God to do that and work through you, hey, he doesn't leave you without blessing you. You have that peace. You have that joy. Before you know it, you and your wife is communicating and, and y'all hitting on all cylinders instead of fighting and arguing. I mean, it's, it's amazing when you really put your life in Christ's hands, how the way he turns it around for you. And like I said, this guy that my, uh, well, I almost said his name, but Tommy knows who I'm talking about. He's real close. <laughs> and we're praying, man, that God will bring him in because he knows who God is. He knows that he's the answer. But he's just like leery about really diving into the whole situation but it's a privilege to know man that he actually comes he talks to us and we share Christ with him in the job site now we don't get up there and just start preaching and hollering and forget about work we take the time like doing break and stuff like that to actually communicate with this man and it's pretty neat how the way God does it so all that I'm wrapping around just in a real short time without taking too much more time is just to you know to condense this real small like is to because there's so much in here that I can be here until y'all bored to death but it's just to let you know that hey to have that movement and that real experience that you want in Christ is fixing your eyes on him and you'll see these fruits come to pass because when you're in his um, will and the way that he wants you to be you'll see things changing in your life people God will start bringing people across your path you'll start going across their path they'll see something in you because there's a light that we can't see it's like I told Tommy about this old time in um, voodoo doctor out there somewhere in South Africa and he was a big time 
you know, according to what, you know, the story goes, he was a big time voodoo doctor. And uh, this guy was up there doing whatever, chanting and all this other stuff. Then all of a sudden, he just, you know, put his hands over his eyes and he started screaming. And he started saying, the light is blinding me. The light is blinding me. And he started pointing. Well, you know, his little entourage that was around him was like, what's wrong with you, man? You, you're losing it. He said, the light, the light, the light. And he kept on pointing. Well, they finally looked at where he was pointing at. And here's an old lady walking across the street going home. And she has her Bible in her hand. And he said, the light is too bright. And what it is is that she just got back from church, spending time with the Lord. And the light of Christ was shining through her. Because we walk in the light when we're in Christ Jesus. And so that was evil spirits within him expose exactly what who we are in this world. We are light to this world just like it says salt to this world. So when we, when we say we're Christians, we need to be solid about what we say. Because believe it or not, if you like it or not, people watch you, people are going to judge you, and they're going to, you know, that, that's the way they see Christ, is through you. And so my thing, even though I'm cutting it short, my thing is to remember that if you're an addict and you haven't had Christ in your life, I, ha I hope that, you know, by the grace of God that y'all take the opportunity doing small groups and things to actually see that Christ is the answer. But then for us that are Christians, I pray in Jesus' name that the light will shine in these small groups, that we're able to share Christ with y'all, say the right words that we need to say to y'all. Because what I'm sharing with you is to let you know that the divine power that we have is in Christ Jesus. The more that we walk with him, the more knowledge we have of him, the more we'll see that power and the operating in our lives, in every area of our lives, in every area of our lives, you know? So to have true victory in this life is to have it through him. Amen? All right. Thank you. Lord, I know I cut it short, but I, at least about four minutes till eight, I think I've done all right. Anyway, Lord, I just pray that this word touches somebody and that, Lord, that it just stirs them up to the point to where, Lord, they'll want to at least take a peek and see what really makes a lot of us click and make us get up every morning and do what we do. And so, Lord, I ask you just to bless this time as we go to these small groups and let it be for your praise and your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you.